great, great, awesome show for you guys tonight. A lot of great comics. The next comic coming stage, one of my good buddies, one of the funniest guys I know. Put your hands together, Mr. David Purdue, everyone. One more time for Neil. Give it up for Neil one more time, one more time. All right, let's get into it. 2016, who's, uh, who's still holding on to like, resolutions? Who's still going to the gym? Clap it up. You still going to the gym? Oh, like seven overachievers in here. Awesome. Get out of here. I, I don't even, let me be honest, I don't even have goals for 2016. I have no goals. That's because I achieved all my goals last year. I did everything I needed to do last year. Anybody ever had that? I don't know what to do with myself. I achieved everything I wanted to do. I achieved it last year. Some of you are like, what are your goals, dude? I'll tell you. Uh, when I started comedy, I said I wanted to be more uh, beloved than Bill Cosby. And then like... <laughs> It was like last year, it was like he knew my dreams. He just like threw the alley oop, I caught it and dunked it. Now I'm here. I don't know what to do with myself. It's crazy. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Uh, happy to be here. Uh, I'm happy because there was adequate parking. Uh, I know, tell me like what, listen, because like sometimes I have to park like in the city. You ever have to park like downtown, like in the city? And like they always have like these guys that like, I don't think work for the city. You know what I'm talking about? But like they're always there to help you park, guys. Okay, so, some of you know about crackheads. Awesome. Yeah, we got so many. Uh, one time I was trying to park, and this dude was like helping me park. He was doing a good job helping me park. And then, but like as he's helping me, all of a sudden this dude just starts yelling at me, right? He's just yelling at me. I don't know what he's saying. So I roll my window down uh, halfway, because we all know not to roll your window all the way down to the crackhead, right? You know that? I roll it down halfway to hear what he's saying. This is what a grown man yelled at me, another grown man. I can't make this up. This dude just goes, uh, hey, you with a sexy mouth. When you get up that car, won't you come in and holler at me? What? <laughs> dude called me a sexy mouth. A sexy mouth. What? I never even heard those two words put together, sexy mouth. You know what I mean? I heard sexy eyes, sexy lips. Like, sexy mouth. I was like, first of all, dude, Oh, uh, why not my whole face? Huh? You know what I mean? Like, it was a good looking day for me. I need you to, need you to recognize my eyelashes are on fleek. They are. You know? Here's the worst part about that. Um, that was my first time ever getting hollered at by a gentleman. And let me just say this. Ladies. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Did I know that's what I felt like? Ah. So aggressive. So aggressive. Here's the worst part about that. Here's the worst part about that. I'm, I'm not a gay man, however, I feel like I'm a solid seven if I were to be gay. And like, what I'm saying is like, that dude was like a four at best. And if I'm honest, I just felt like I was deserving of a much better holler. You know, like, yeah, I was, like, let you have a dude holler at you and you're just like, ugh, how dare you? Like that, that's how I felt, man. I was like, let's see all this sexy seven has got here. Like a seven, like that's no special lane. Like I believe in order, right? I believe in lanes, right? Seven, there's nothing special about a seven. It is what it is. But like a four is kind of like a cul-de-sac. You know what I mean? Like you're not going anywhere, dude. What are you doing, right? Like a four, you can holler at a three. And like a five, your shirt is clean. But his shirt wasn't clean. I was like, you have no right. What are you doing? So because I believe in order, this is what I said to this gentleman. I roll my window all the way down and I just go, Hey, bro, don't, don't go chasing waterfalls, dude. Nah, you stick to the rivers and the lakes that you're used to. Yeah, I said that. If you caught that reference, high five yourself. Yeah, you're either black or have a black friend. That's awesome. You can bang head bounce after the show. Hell yeah. I like you guys. I like you guys so much that I got a haircut before I came here. Dude. Yeah, I got a haircut. I, um... I don't know, I go to a black barbershop. Anybody ever go to a black barbershop? Two people, right here, I know. Uh, the brown people that I see. I already know, everybody else is like, what, are they different? Yeah, they are. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter, it doesn't even matter any barbershop, like black, doesn't matter which one. They're very hypersexual, like hyper-masculine environments. You know what I mean? Like, there's no place you want to take like any woman that you care about there, because you always hear some shit, right? One time my barber was cutting my hair, right? And a lady walked by the outside of the barbershop, and this lady was like eight-ish months pregnant, and my barber stopped cutting my hair to yell, God damn, I can't wait till she get unpregnant so I can fuck that. No. <laughs> unpregnant? Unpregnant. This dude is making up words with sharp objects in my head. What are you doing? 
So I was a weird place to barbershop. One time my barber posed a very weird question to the entire barbershop. This dude just goes, yo, yo, real quick, real quick, question, question, question. Would you rather your son be gay or on crack? <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like, well, please pick me. This would be the easiest pop quiz I'll ever take. Now he didn't pick me first. He picked the dude over here. He was like, what do you say? And that dude was like, shit, give my son crack. I was like, oh no, dude. Oh, oh you failed the pop quiz. Uh, and it was open book. What are you doing? <laughs> then he pointed to the other dude. He was like, what do you say? That dude was like, yeah, give my son crack. Like, what I'm saying is like, both of them said it with such confidence that like for a split second, like I generally thought crack had gotten better. <laughs> I was like, damn, good for crack. That's crazy. That's cra like, 80s was tough for crack, but I guess he got his act together. Is it a superfood now? What's up with crack? What is up with crack? Can you, are you like an X-Man after crack? What is up with crack? And then I remember I have several people in my family who are addicted to the crack, and I don't know, maybe they're getting a the bad crack, but I don't think it does what they think it does. And so I was like, nah, dude, I don't think these, y'all think y'all are right. Like, what are you doing? They were like, what do you say, Dave? And I was like, seriously, we're gonna do gay or on crack? Like, have you guys taken a gander in either one of those communities? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you have, but the gay community, uh, they typically have both front and backyards. Uh, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Like, they drive cars to work. Yeah. Yeah, and then they adopt little Asian babies and put them in real nice clothes. They do that. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen TV, I know how gay works. All of which things people on crack don't do. Cause they are too busy doing crack. Like, <laughs> it is a very time consuming activity, right? And I was like, obviously if I had the choice, I'm obviously gonna say I want my son to be gay, right? Obviously those are two options. And I get it though, I get it. If my son were to do crack, I don't know, he might suck a dick for that crack. I don't know. I haven't done the research. I heard that's a possibility. But what I'm saying, though, I stood before them as an artist. I said, look, if my son is going to suck a dick, I want him to suck that dick because he loves that dick and not because of the poison. That's what I said to them. Thank you. That's what I said. I thought, no, 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 because I thought I had changed hearts and minds. I did. I thought that they were going to be like, oh, shit, we fucked up, dude, my bad. And I thought, I don't know, maybe they're gonna champion me as like a new civil rights leader or some shit. I don't know, call me Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Jr., Jr. I don't know. I don't know. That's not what happened. Here's what happened. My barber stops what he's doing, looks at me, and just goes, hey, dog, uh, what the fuck is a gander? And I was like, oh. You are dumb as fuck. Uh, like you said I'm pregnant earlier. I don't know why I expected anything out of you. I don't know. Anyway, guys, that is my time. You guys have been a lovely crowd. You ready for more show? Say hell yeah!